Hey guys, welcome back to my very small but very precious to me channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my uni internship journey. For today's video, I'm going to be going through the three main internship experiences that I've had so far and what I'll be doing is breaking them up into five broad categories. So number one is how I went about finding the job. Number two is why I wanted to go for it. Three would be what exactly was the job scope and of course what was the salary. Four and five are kind of combined but it's what I liked about it or what I didn't really like as much and also what I learned from it sure most of you would already know who I am but just to give like some preference I am a year two communications and new media student studying in AUS so I'm not gonna go into the things that I did like post A levels or any ad hoc jobs that I may have done but I'm only gonna focus on more of like the long-term experiences that I've had in uni so far Popping in here because I forgot a very important disclaimer which is that this is in no way a guide to like what you should be doing in your uni life or as a CNM student. Yeah, this is not like a tutorial on how to be successful or anything like that. It's just me talking about my experiences and maybe it will help you in some way but I'm not trying to teach anything and of course just do whatever works for you and if I were to uh, speak honestly about like how busy I was and how working affected my mental health I mean that's a whole other conversation but I think um, I would have made the same decision so it was a trade-off that was worth it for me but you know you do you and do whatever works best for you don't let society tell you what you should or shouldn't do we'll just go into the rest of the video now I'll be going through my experiences in chronological order so it might be easier to organize and understand. And the very first one that I'll be going through is marketing and communications intern at um, NUS Office of Student Affairs. Firstly, how I found the job. It was actually through an email blast that was sent to probably all of the students in NUS. I don't remember there being a lot of details on this advertisement but I thought that it sounded a little bit interesting so I just went to reply back to indicate my interest and find out more about the role and then they asked me to come down for an interview at OSA itself. I had a chat with the... it wasn't my supervisor, I think it might have been like a HR manager from OSA or some other manager but she just asked me the normal like why do you want to work here what's my experience so i brought up the stuff that i did after A's. she did ask to see my portfolio and like some pieces that i'd written in the past and not too long after that they got back to me with an acceptance but the reason why i wanted to go for it i felt like it wasn't too far out of my comfort zone because it was quite a writing heavy type of role and my experience so far had just totally been writing based but it was still good because I could learn how to like write for a different audience for the people who read residential life which to this day I'm honestly not sure who it's basically like a blog for NUS peeps maybe international students would read it if they want to get to know more about like residential life I like that it was flexible work from home even then. You could just type out your articles whenever suits you as long as you met the KPI, which I'll talk about now. I had to hit like a minimum number of posts per semester and I can't remember exactly what it is but I think it was 10 or 11 across the entire semester. I wrote um, 13 if I remember correctly. The pay for the first semester I worked there, SEM1, was $8 an hour but increased to $12 an hour in SEM2 because they had changed um, like the NUS work scheme policies. Also in terms of um, job scope, there's uh, the social media aspect to go along with it. For that, you have to create one social media post and one social media story for every article that you write. What I liked about being the Marcoms intern at OSA was that there is quite a lot of creative freedom in it. It's like pitching your own stories week after week. There's a lot of freedom to write about whatever you wanted to write about and because my background has mostly been like lifestyle kind of like fun pieces so I did a couple of like food related posts, I did a lot of uni life related posts and I also got to do um, my own interviews. In that aspect also I think it was really good because 
I could meet more people like I had an excuse to talk to people you know like when you're writing something that's kind of an opportunity to meet people and talk to people that you ordinarily wouldn't have so I felt like it was a really nice balance between what I was comfortable and a bit more experienced with versus what I was trying to expand out of what I liked about it as well was the social media aspect because I mean I didn't have experience handling any other social media account other than my own social media was super important in like directing people to our web page itself to sum up things that I learned I think it would be definitely catering my writing style to a different audience than I was used to. Uh, paying more attention to detail because, you know, this, this wasn't like just typing for my own blog or anything. I actually had to get my work vetted by like the supervisor and the higher ups will also go and see sometimes what was going on with the blog. So more attention to detail, writing frequently and consistently because there was like a, like a set schedule to it. You couldn't just like block mass post five times and then go MIA for the next couple of weeks. So that was my experience with OSA. It was a pretty good introduction to working in school. Number two, the role that I did next was a research assistant at the Sosui Hawk School of Public Health, which is under NUS. How I got to know of it was actually through the first one. I feel like one thing kind of led to the other because to accept the marketing and comms role at OSA, it's on a portal called the NUS Student Work Scheme. So when I was on it, I realized that there are actually other job listings. I just was browsing through and then I saw a posting for a research assistant there and I just decided to apply as well as email the prof with like my interest and a couple of questions to clarify because sometimes when profs list things they won't put like the full details there so that's why they leave the email there for you to contact them and um, I guess send them like your CV or portfolio if they ask for it. Oh yes and for the Marcom's role I did this from around September of 2019 to maybe like near the summer or into summer of 2020 so about one whole school year and then um, this research role was from summer of 2020 and that continued into school why I wanted to go into a research assistant role is because obviously it was very very different from anything I'd done before. In fact, I had not done any kind of research related roles. I thought it would be a, a good exposure to like a new field, something a bit more academic, a bit more official maybe. And anyway, since it was summer, I wanted to find um, a job and I thought why not do something that I could learn rather than um, go back to like doing F&B, which is fun. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to get to know something a little bit more different. Because this research assistant role was kind of split into two parts, I'll talk about them separately. Um, the first one is for the first half of the research project and for this first part I was tasked to do outreach and uh, participant recruitment basically asking people to come and participate in the study which is related to youth and smoking for this role I was paid $20 an hour and it was actually a lot of saikang because the idea of getting people to participate is like ordinarily I guess um, recruiters could just walk on the street and ask people, you know, you see people who are smoking and you can just approach them and ask, would you be interested in doing this study with us? But because it was COVID, I wasn't actually allowed to go up and like randomly talk to people on the street. So what they had me do was print a shit ton of flyers and walk around the entire Singapore, particularly around areas which we could typically find more smokers and young smokers and just hand them out to people and it was honestly really tiring even though there was subsidized grab but i'd like grab from one place to another and then just walk around the area trying to find people to give it out to or drop it into like random people's mailboxes which is not an effective communication strategy i think i distributed like 500 or so flyers in that period of like two weeks which is quite crazy however after that or like midway through it was kind of obvious that it wasn't really working so we just turned to online communication and marketing which is where I think I did a better job it was a lot of like reformatting the flyer to look more visually appealing 
trying to outreach to as many online spaces as possible like every platform you name it we were probably there also one thing about recruitments is that the point of the study was to look at how younger people kind of like started smoking and their smoking habits and in particular underage people kids <laughs> so getting kids to talk wasn't easy because uh, they're not typically on like ad hoc jobs those kinds of Facebook pages or even like telegram groups so it was um, a target audience that's quite hard to reach and then after that I was involved later again to vet through the transcripts which is listening to hours and hours of interviews and making sure that the transcription is correct and making any edits along the way and because of that I learned a lot about smoking and cigarettes and e-cigarettes so after I was done with this first part, I thought that was it and there was like a couple weeks break but a few weeks later, uh, the prof approached me again to ask if I wanted to continue in the research project but in a different role to do literature reviews. A literature review is basically what you do whenever you want to write an essay which is look through a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of journal articles and try and summarize them so that you can use this information in your essay. And it's the same thing for our research. So what she wanted me to do was scroll through a lot of articles, research papers, studies on smoking in Singapore with youth, basically all around smoking and uh, summarize every single article into like a huge database so that she could use it for the project and also I think for like future research studies. I did this from close to when I stopped part one of the research assistant role, maybe October of 2020 and then I did it into semester two of year two, stopping like in February of 2021. And for this part, uh, they increased the compensation for it, so I got $30 an hour for this role, which is, I have to say, very unusual because for research roles, it generally does get paid higher but only if you are like a graduate or a master student so they were paying me uh, like master student price and I'm guessing it's because my prof had a grant to carry out the research so they probably had funding for it and that's why it paid quite well I summarized over 100 articles in total what I liked about this research assistant experience it definitely challenged me um, it was a completely new arena as I mentioned. It gave me like new new ways to think about marketing. <laughs> marketing a research study and trying to convey that to people. And also it exposed me to like the rigor of academia, especially during the literature review part, which can be very very dry, especially if you're not into I mean the topic that you are looking into like over and over again. Some articles could be very very technical and I might not even understand what I was reading a lot of the time but I had to see about the important parts so that my prof could just so she didn't have to waste time and like look through so many articles and she could just get right to the main point. It definitely honed my skills in piecing together like bits of information, uh, giving me perseverance. It's also quite self-guided I would say. Um, after you get into the rhythm of what you need to do, there isn't a lot of hand holding at all. It's a lot of self initiated work, and um, you gotta like just update her every week yourself. Um, it is cool to be named in a research study. The third and final role I'll be talking about is for content marketing at Glintz. How I found out about this role is by applying through Glintz for Glintz. Basically, I was just searching for an internship to start off and um, I saw that Glintz had an opening so I was like, why not? For the application process-wise, after I had sent in like my interest, they came back with an initial phone call. I remember with like a person from HR, she was really really sweet. We proceeded on with a writing task as well as two personality tests which is quite interesting like I never had to do an, a personality test for any like job interview ever. For the technical test, they tasked me to write an interesting short article to introduce like Glint services to any of Glint's clients. So just like summarizing whatever they do uh, and 
trying to market it in a way to like a potential client I feel like what I may have done to make it stand out a little bit more is to not just give like a text which they asked for but I went ahead and did like a sort of marketing collateral like doing a mock-up of how it would look like in an actual advertisement on Canva was quite quick and easy but I just thought it would make it look better so I'm not sure if that played a part in uh, getting accepted at Glintz after that, then we had one more final interview with my supervisor. I worked at Glintz for close to two semesters from October of 2020. So it was the same time as I was doing my lit review research assistant role. And I continued that all the way until around like April of 2021 this year. And for this, I was paid $800 a month because it's considered a part-time internship and you can calculate the CPF uh, yourself. It's a bit hard to summarize everything I did at Glintz because it was a very like all-in-one kind of role so I handled a lot of different different tasks. So to give some context, I was in the Singapore team of Glintz catering to more of like a local audience because Glintz has various HQ in Indonesia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, things like that. So I was in charge of maintaining the blog they have for Singapore and I'd write articles on like business management, on offshoring, on like marketing trends and things like that. I'd also do newsletters. This is for like our entire SG Employers database. Maintain metrics on the blog or certain websites to see what was our engagement and what was our audience. Also copywriting for advertisements and other collaterals that we needed for marketing. And if there were any projects or events, um, I might be roped in by my colleagues to uh, just help out with it. I'll start with what I disliked first. I wasn't a fan of the turnover being quite fast. I'm not sure if it's just a startup thing. At least in my time, like my supervisor, my original supervisor left within one to two months of me starting. And that was when I was just starting to understand a bit more about what I had to do and gaining clarity on my role. So it was quite confusing when she left and I had to like be onboarded with a new a new supervisor. But then I also had more colleagues joining the team and that was really nice because I like in all of my previous roles they were more individual more self-sufficient I never really had to like collaborate or discuss with anyone so it was really really nice to um, finally have a team that worked together and that I could ask for help obviously because they're all full-timers so they were way more experienced but still like respected my views asked for my opinion and really like led me through and walked me through um, the marketing the communications processes so leading into that, that's one thing that I really liked about Glintz. I think the people there are super, super good to work with. I feel like on a baseline level, they're really passionate about what they do. And everyone in, in the company genuinely wants the company to succeed and like meet the KPIs. And I think having this kind of passion is probably necessary if you want to work in a startup because the workload can be pretty high. I got used to just churning out work like past 12 a.m. kind of thing. There was just so much to do. I mean, in addition to schoolwork and my other like CCAs and commitments, but there would also be other people who are like replying past human hours. There was a lot of deadlines to meet based on all of our collaborations with other companies and organizations. Yeah, that's that's kind of like a like and a dislike at the same time. Whatever works for you, if you are someone who likes it to be more structured and to have like a clear boundary between your work day and your off time, then I don't think you would get that here. I definitely didn't feel that. I felt like I was working all the time, but I did like what I was doing because I felt like I was learning a lot. And that's another plus. I think I learned much, much more about marketing than I could have ever learned in school as a communication student. In CNM, it's very, very theoretical, at least it's in NUS. And if you wanna do like hard marketing sales, you definitely won't find that in CNM. You'd have to go to like biz at least. Some of you might know that I'm actually interning right now. This is for my NM compulsory internship, so it'll be for six months. I'm not gonna talk about it, I think, until it's done with, just cause I feel like 
I don't really know a lot yet. I want to be through the whole thing before I can give like a holistic overview on what it's like. All right, and that's it. That's um, the rundown of my entire uni internship journey so far. My throat is kind of dry from talking so much to myself, to a camera. So I'm gonna go um, and see you guys soon. Okay, try with them now. Oh no, it's so glaring. How about like this? <laughs> yeah. Some, like... I'm gonna just look white. Yeah. Mm -hmm.